Right when it's three o'clock? Is it three, Keaton? Not yet. She sells she she shells by the seashore. She 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 <laughs> we're, we're warming up with some tongue twisters. We'll start right at three o'clock. Drawing a snake. It's three. It's three o'clock. Welcome to Art Lessons. I'm Kisa Hausman and I'm coming to you from Make in Paducah, Kentucky. And Tate is my awesome helper and my youngest child. So he gets rooked into helping. Keaton, my middle child, is on the camera and answering your questions on the computer. Well, so August is request month. So people have been sending in requests, some by, um, you can leave them in the comments today and we'll see them on the video or you can um, uh, message me either way and just send what you want. I will say it's anything goes. We did the beach in July. I will say in September, we're gonna be doing make-believe creatures. So you're gonna to get to give me the option of two things and we're gonna combine them together. So it's kind of double up month. But today we're gonna to talk about a snake. And what I like about this is that we have the aspects of drawing where we're in front of and behind. Lots of times when we're building drawings, we're talking everything involves behind, foreground, background, things that are in front, things that are behind, and um, we want to make sure that that helps you because once you establish that, it helps you with shading, it helps you with composition, all those big words involved in drawing. Keaton, is the fan okay? Okay, good deal. So, what we're going to do is we're going to draw the stick in first. Now, lots of times I say don't use an eraser. You're going to need to erase where the stick goes. So, that's part of the easiest way to lay out the in front and the behind. Because the stick stays and the snake comes in front and behind there. So, let's go ahead and just draw a basic stick on our paper. Which is going to be squiggly lines basically moving across as they come a little bit closer together. So I'm going to start up here and you can just make your line not so perfect. Just kind of have it come down here and I'm going to make it have a branch. So to do that, I just come up. Yep, perfect. And right there. Now Tate, I'm on an erasable graphite. Tate is on permanent marker. He's a lefty, so lots of times it'll smear, but he's not gonna be able to erase his lines, which is great. You're gonna be able to see his map of how he drew it. So let's draw the bottom of the stick. So I'm gonna come along a little bit below and I'm gonna stop about right here and let's draw. Can draw a little bit darker? Oh yeah, I sure can. I can darken it up, so. Somebody request a darker. Let me darken that up. The nice thing about something that is organic or from nature in art is nothing is really perfectly square. Nothing is perfectly straight. So we've got the bottom line right here. And then we've got this little bit of a stick. And then we're gonna come back in. See how it's real close together? Oh, and we'll do another one. Let's just make a little point right there and then bring it back in. So when you're wanting to make sticks and branches, and usually when you're making a full tree, you don't go to quite this detail, but, um, and then we're gonna continue along, and then we're gonna literally branch off. We're gonna come down here, and I'm gonna go all the way off my paper. There we go. Now we've gotta connect these two lines, so let's just bring it back, coming closer to our line as we get there. So now, we have a nice branch for our snake to hang on. Now, I kind of, snakes I have to say, I don't really want to meet a snake. I don't want to hold a snake. Don't want to really encounter a snake. So I made my snake a little more whimsical than realistic and at least fairly friendly. So this is not a hyper-realistic snake. It's more the kind that if I did have to meet a snake, I would at least want one that looked friendly. So, but do you like snakes? Oh, see, Tate, Tate likes snakes. You may think a snake is awesome, or you may know some really cool facts about how snakes are good. We kind of know bad things about snakes, like they bite you, 
and they have big fangs and they bite you and they have big fangs but you may know some great things about the snakes keaton's making fangs behind the camera okay so let's get to drawing we've got our branch it's our house that our snake's going to hang on and we need to put the in front and behind so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with this line we're going to put the shape of the head in but i want to put the body in first normally i'm starting with the head but i want to get this body wrapping in front of and behind the branch so i'm going to start a little bit below right here there's the end of our branch and i'm going to come up in a round almost make a round as though you're making you were going to come all the way down and i'm going to stop at that branch right there that's right now we're going to echo this but you notice how the line only comes up that high so come a little bit over and raise it up and just kind of go right there that's going to give us our in front and behind oh we have a fact or some, a question keaton Oh, I, ha I did hear that once only because when they eat a mouse, it like makes a big hump in there. Like it looks real funny. You can tell when a snake had a big dinner. That's pretty cool. So snakes eat their food whole. So mine won't erase all the way, but that way you can kind of tell. You would erase this line. Well, yours isn't going to erase. It's permanent marker. <laughs> no worries. We're going to be putting some patterns. So we've got where the snake is coming up right here. We're going to follow this path back down. So really, if we took this, we're going to pretend to draw a cross, but we're not going to actually draw on the branch. And we're going to put a little loop just like that. So did you see what I did there? It's as though I was continuing that line, but I didn't touch my paper. I put that little loop right there. We're going to do the same thing to create the other. This is where the line would be, kind of right here, right by where our little part comes up. So I'm going to pretend to follow that down, even if you make a light mark on your tree, that's fine. And as soon as I get to where my branch ends, I'm going to pick it up <coughs> and I'm going to do the opposite of what I did here. Instead of a rainbow, I'm going to make a big smiley face going behind the branch. Did you see how I did that? When I came to a line, with the branch, I skipped it and I came over there. That's gonna give the impression or the illusion that the snake is on the other side of the branch. The branch is in front. So when you're drawing, you're always conscious of what's in front and what's behind. So Tate, do you wanna continue this all the way up? You wanna take it all the way up right here. Yep, okay. Because this is the part we just drew right there. You're perfect. You've got that line. There's our little hump. There's where the snake's coming down. So it kind of does this. We've got that first part of the snake. It's a little hard to think that way, but we're going to do it again. So we're doing that line of the snake and we're going to go behind and come in front. So let's hold this. We're going to come to, remember where we made that little U? We're going to start, put our pencil right there. We're gonna lightly go across our branch. We don't really want a line there till we get to the other side of the branch. You see what I did? I started right here. And if I had a dot, 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 it would go right across there. And now I'm gonna make a hump just like right here. We're gonna repeat this action again. So we're gonna make a hump right there. It's almost like we've got hump one and hump two. If we were making a camel, we'd be all set. So. We've done this part that comes up. We've come behind right there. We've come behind. Guess what? In order to wrap, where does he have to go on the trunk? Does he stay behind or does he need to come in front? In front. So this time we're going to do what's right here. We're going to come. I'm going to take this line and he's actually in front. So I'm going to follow that all the way down. So it's as though if you started right here, you just come all the way down and as though you're making another hump right down here. Yep, that's perfect, Tate. I'm gonna bring it back up. I don't wanna go all the way over there, but I'm gonna bring it back up to right there. So, yep. Oh, 
Keaton, what do you have? Did you know snakes don't have eyelids? Oh, I gave my snake eyelid. Well, our snake has eyelids, but real snakes don't have eyelids. It made my snake happier looking when I gave it some eyelids. Okay, so let's get back to where this front is. This is a tricky part because this is that wrapped look right there. Are you ready, Tate, for this one? Okay, so we did this. We've come all the way around here. Now we're going to come up as though this is really tricky. So we're going to go to this spot right here, this first line over there. Remember this one that came up? Find this one that came up. Where's that one that came up? You're going to find that line right there. See that one? And we're going to dot lightly. We're not actually going to show up. We're going to go across to the other side of the branch. And then when we get to the top, we're going to come up and all the way down. But we're going to stop before we get to the end. Yep. Yep. I'm going to actually have you bring that all the way over here. You want some space right here. So bring it up. Yeah, you want to have some of this space right here. There we go. So let me show you that again, because that's kind of one of those I'm talking go behind, go in front, go behind, go in front. And what happens is we're behind, but we've got to wrap it in front. So what, technically, if we could erase that all the way, right there, your branch stays right here. I'll color that in so you can see it. See where my branch is, but the snake is in front. They're right there. So we need his tail. This is going to loop behind. Ooh, it's tricky. We're going to wrap it again. So we're going to come over here. Yep. And we're going to come down like this across the branch and go up like that. Perfect, eh? That's perfect. Then we're going to come right here to where the bottom of the branch is. And we're going to follow that line down and make that little tail. And then if you can, we'll erase this. Oh, Keaton has a question, has, has something to share. Did you know snakes have, a fle have flexible jaws which allow them to eat prey bigger than their head? Oh my goodness. So really this flexible jaw opens up way bigger than their head. What would you eat if you could open your mouth that big? An entire pizza. Would you eat an entire pizza at once? <laughs> The world's giant hamburger, biggest hamburger. Hmm. You don't know? I Thinking. It would be handy for eating competitions to just if you were a, if you were a competitive eater and you had the snake head, you could really go to town. But so let me kind of walk you through this wrapping the body, and then we'll add the head, and then we'll start adding all the decoration. So we started right here. We came up and we made a hump. Then we drew a line right here and kind of brought it up to that top part to show that it's wrapping. We left the branch in front because the snake is wrapping behind like this. And we drew a line keeping it behind the branch. Another almost like a big smile, rainbow smile. And we also brought this line and drew this little part of the snake. So that way that shape gave us that the snake comes below the branch. Then we're still behind the branch. So we came up here and we drew another like a rainbow right there. And then we brought it in front of the branch all the way down and back up to close there. Then we wanted to make sure we wrapped it. So we brought this line up not behind the branch and then wrapped it in front of the branch. Then in front of the branch, we added the tail with a line out like this and a line out like that. What happens is when you're going in front of and behind, you can't see this would stay in front of whatever's behind. See how my finger, you can only see part of it. But when my finger wraps in front, you can see all of my fingers. So you're going with that concept with the branch behind, in front. And so that's how when we remove the lines, we're putting the snake in front, 
when we put the lines, keep the lines, we're putting the snake in the back. So let's add our funny face. Are you ready? This is your drawing. If you want to add eyelashes, you can add eyelashes. If you want to make your head bigger or with meaner eyes, you can. However you want to do it, but I'll walk you through how I drew mine and you can make your adjustments as you go. So are you ready, Tate? Mm -hmm. Let's put the top on there. So we're going to start just by, um, I think this is a simple enough shape I can walk you through it. So right in between these two, let's put a little hump. Just like that. So that's going to be this little hump right here. Then we're going to put these kind of eye bulges. So we're going to come right in front of our hump and we're going to come up and then down like that. Almost like you're making an M. Come up and then down like an M. Perfect. We're going to repeat that but backwards on the other side. So let's come up and then big hump, little hump like that. Yep, that looks fantastic, Tate. So then we're going to bring it around right here. We're going to bring that line down just like that. We're going to repeat that on this side. This is symmetrical, which means it's the same on both sides. There you go. So we've got this his nose. So to do his nose, we're going to put this line in that comes down, makes a little hump, comes down. So let's do that. Down, make a little hump in the middle, and come back down and close out your shape. Okay, we've got the top part. We have any more questions, Keaton? We good? Okay. So let's put the rest of this in and then we'll address our eyes. So this is just a little bit of a shape down below. So I'm going to come to this side right here. You ready to put that in? I guess it's like his nose. And we're going to come down. It's almost like I make a little dent in it. And you can bring it all the way back up <coughs> the other side. I don't know why it reminds me of Donald Duck right now, but it does. <laughs> and then let's put his little nose holes in there. So kind of in the center, give him two nose holes. I slant mine out a little bit, but they can be straight up and down. You can make them bigger or smaller if you want to. Let's add his tongue first because that's an in front and behind. Foreground, background. So we're, let's add his tongue. Now you can get really creative with this if you want. I'm just going to put it out. It's forked. So to do that, we draw a line. We come down, bring your point in like you're making a little mountain. Oh, just one fork. You've got it. Oh, well, it can be, you can have three forks if you want on your snake. And then bring it back up. Perfect. Oh, Keaton has what a question. What will you name your snake? Oh, what will I name my snake? Um, I would have to name my snake, uh, my snake a very, a name that was not scary like Miss Bessie or something like that. <laughs> that made it sound like she's a snake that makes biscuits. You know, Miss Bessie who makes biscuits, the biscuit making snake. <laughs> okay, um, I bet Tate has a name for his. So Tate, let's draw the rest of the mouth and you know what else we need? Let's add those fangs. So on either side of the tongue, let's give it a big triangle coming down. Big triangle. Your fangs can be as big or as small as you want them to be. Ooh, Tate's got some big fangs over there. Now you want to make sure the mouth is wider than the fangs. So you're going to come down on that side on one side of the fang and come to the tongue. The tongue's in the front, so we don't want to draw a line in front of it. And you're going to do that on both sides. See how we do that? And then we're going to give it a second line following that same one with a little space. Just to give it more of that mouth feel. Okay. You ready? Oh, Keaton says we have a question. Did you know pythons can grow over 8.7 meters or 28? Pythons can be the longest snake in the world. Pythons can be 28 feet in length. What is 28 feet in length that we could compare that to? Like how long is a car? Is a car like 14 feet? Is a car 28 feet? Like how would we come a suburban? Maybe a suburban. How long is a suburban? And we'll see if it's as long as that is. Okay, so let's do these eyes. 
we're going to put an oval here and an oval there kind of right underneath those funny little humps so let's put an oval in there and put an oval over here I love it now I'm gonna give mine eyelids because it looks nicer but if you want to be true to snake no eyelid snakes you can leave them off so to make an eyelid I'm just gonna draw a little line across the top of that oval right there okay and then to give those eyes I'm gonna draw almost like a little rainbow come up in the bottom I'm making sure it touches the bottom and I'm gonna color that in lightly color it in lightly Do you see what I did now yours is kind of hard to color in lightly Tate so you can color it all in and then I added a little bit of a pupil in the middle of that so you can add as much of a pupil or I'll make my little cross eye then it'll look even nicer <laughs> one person named their snake sunshine oh sunshine see see nice name so it seems like a nice snake um bourbon is 18.7 feet long so it's so a python would be 10 feet longer than a suburban wow how long is a jet how long is a jet i don't know does anyone what's 28 i want to compare it well, how long is a tractor trailer truck Okay, so a school bus is forty-five feet, so it's over half the length of a school bus. Okay, that's a good one. A school—it's all—it's over half the length of a school bus. So if you were riding on a school bus, it could reach over halfway down the aisle to come say hi to you. So, moral of the story is: if a python's on the bus, go to the back of the bus. <laughs> okay, so let's let's add some little extra as though it has eyebrows or a little extra eye cavity right there one note if you're doing this kind of thing if you make it go down further in the middle it looks angrier if you make it go down further to the side it looks surprised or happier so and then we're going to start adding some detail to the snake now the snake would have I kind of did a fun little patterning with random circles um, but it would have a belly that had kind of that striation so let's mark where that belly would be we won't see it here because that's the front going over wrapping in front of the tree oh you have another statement the pythons released in the Everglades have almost completely destroyed the small mammals um, population oh my goodness there are pythons wandering around the Everglades yeah, where are those the they Everglades have, are down in Florida it's like way down just let now them go roam around. Yes, they're not wild all, all over Okay, moral of that story is keep your python on a leash. <laughs> For it me. Have to be a very long leash. <laughs> okay, so let's do the belly. Obviously, we know that belly is going to go down here. Remember, this is behind this branch. So any line we draw is going to go behind the branch. So we're just going to copy this line coming in a little bit like that and coming back in that's going to make that belly to help us see it we can draw the lines across it now I'm not drawing mine exactly straight I'm giving them a little bit of a curve almost as I just come around the corner like that what do you have Keaton did you know that there is a snake called an eyelash viper that has a modified scale that looks like an eyelash oh oh there's an eyelash viper so if you add eyelashes it it doesn't it's not an actual eyelash it just looks like it someone also named their snake mr fangs mr fangs that's a good one okay so we won't really see the rest of the belly but we see it right here again so just right here we're going to draw and we're going to come down and curve it in so it ends so yeah you're just going to add it in there tight that's fine okay then let's stripe it so we remember what that line is sometimes when you're drawing and you add those lines you're like where am i well we'll add those stripes so we know we've got a little bit that shows on our tail so we're going to repeat that again so we're going to come up and we're going to draw a line along the base kind of ending it around there so right there you see how we did that and then let's wrap that with our lines now I want you to know even though this looks very whimsical and cartoony this is an advanced concept in art what you're learning and I know you're doing a great job is this 
in front of, behind, is really hard to conceptualize, which means that you can see it on paper. So give yourself a break if you're, if you're having any problems with it, or if you're rocking at it, give yourself a big high five because you are doing awesome. This is an advanced concept in art. Great job, guys. So let's add a little patterning in there. We've got our tail. What I did was I just took not quite circular shapes. I wasn't worried about my scales. I just kind of made shapes that overlapped and touched that were kind of like circles. So I gave them all sorts of, I'm gonna, they touch. person also named their snake Fang. Fang, that seems a very appropriate. So I just came along, yep, and I just added Remember, when you're doing this part of the snake, you're going behind the branch. So, just continue anywhere it's showing in the front. And then I'll show you kind of a fun way to remember. And they can be bigger and smaller. Remember, this part goes in front of the branch. So you're gonna continue that patterning there. I'm using my branch to where I erase my lines to kind of help disguise some of that. So just overlapping them, drawing back and forth. It's just kind of fun patterning. Yep. And then we're going to go all the way down the tail. Did you know some sea snakes can breathe partially through their skin, allowing for longer underwater? I didn't know that. I didn't really think about there being sea snakes either. Okay, so there are all sorts of ways to do scales. Remember we talk a lot in our drawing classes about how we give the impression of something, meaning we don't have to draw every single detail. If you're trying to identify this snake in nature, you would need to really know very specifics about it and study actual pictures. When you're doing something whimsical like this, you can just give the idea that there are scales. Now, what we're gonna do to pattern the scales is we're gonna use what's called hatching. Hatching is when you take a line and you draw it like this. It's a form of shading. It's a very basic form of shading. But if you take that technique and you do it, so do it in one of your circles, drawing your lines going one direction, all one direction. Yep. One person named their snake Jake. Jake the snake, I like it. So then, yep, what you can do is do the next one, do it in a different direction. And you can do them wider or smaller. And you can continue around the snake, striping, but going in different directions and patterns when you change to another circle. So. Then, if you decide to add color, you already have some texture and pattern to it. So you can fill in the squares like this, anywhere you want to on there. But it becomes a fun way to add texture. And you could always do this all different shades of green, but you can fill in your circles and you just switch the direction your line goes. That's a very basic form of shading. Did you know there are around 3,000 different species of snakes? I didn't know there were 3,000 different snakes. So I'm going to come around. Over 3,000 different kinds of snakes, species of snakes. I did know, oh, I do know one, m more poisonous snakes, very, very poisonous snakes, like the super scary poisonous snakes, <laughs> are found in Australia. I th like the really scary ones. I don't know which kinds they are, but they're super scary. One person named their snake Coils. Oh, I like that one. Very clever, good job guys. Okay, so you can continue with this and go around and you see by changing the direction, by changing the width of the stripes, you get this creative patterning. It's a fun way to explore and when you're doing this, you can decide, does one look darker than the other depending on which way I turn it? 
so we can come all the way around. I'm going to come in here and give myself hatching all the way around and get to the end. So that way you can fill in your snake. You can always add some shading, remember? Whatever's behind, so when the snake's in front, the branch gets the shading. When the snake's behind, the snake gets the shading and the branch stays light. You see how that works? What's behind typically always gets shaded. It's further back or it's in shadow. So that's, there are exceptions as always. So the mouth is behind. So to punch out the fangs and the tongue, I can color it behind. So you can kind of play with that and have fun. You can add leaves, you can add whatever you want to to your tree. If you want to add extra branches, it becomes your drawing. So I think I'll have to put Miss Bessie the biscuit making I don't know why she's making biscuits but that sounded like at least she would be a nice snake and biscuits are tasty <laughs> did you know that copperheads smell like cucumbers who got close enough to a copperhead to smell like cucumbers well they were just eating cucumbers Another person named their snake Slither. Oh, that's a good one. That reminds me of Harry Potter and Slytherin, but that refers to snakes too. So, okay. So pretty much you have the basics. I'm so proud of y'all because what you were doing is you were doing that whole in front of behind concept. Understanding how to make it visually look like the snake is wrapping the tree is can be really difficult. So that's a way to help you learn that concept, which is a great basic drawing concept, but you've got to have fun drawing a snake. And we learned a lot about snakes today. Can open their mouth really wide, eat big things. Um, Did you know snakes only eat six to 30 meals a year? Okay, six, six, I guess the six are the really big meals. <laughs> try, oh yes, you want to ride in the back of the bus and you want to try and make it in between their meals, like when they're still full. So, um, all that being said, I hope you had fun drawing this snake. We sure do. We enjoy coming to meet with y'all and have drawing class every Wednesday at three o'clock. Um, next week, I'm still open for requests. So send me what you think you want to draw. We'll have a lot of fun with it. Usually we just pull out something where I make sure I can give you a concept, but sometimes it just sounds like too much fun to draw and we just have to do it. So we'll do that. And with that note, art is man's nature. Nature is God's art. I'll see you next Wednesday. Have fun creating. Good day.